Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Anybody? Yeah. Hey, Lee. Hey, this is Lee. Hey, Lee. How are you? I'm good. How are y'all doing? We're good. Thank you. Well, I was listening to music for a while, so I wasn't sure if we'd started yet or not. Yeah, <laughs> we're just getting ready. We're at Jordan. Okay, is that's great. Jordan's letting in the public, so we have some guests, and so she's letting everybody in that way. Okay, great. As soon as we get everybody in, Jean can um, get us going. Okay, looks like everyone's here, Jordan. Who's uh, no one? Yeah. Okay. Yes, everybody's here. All right, I'll call the meeting to order. It's 102. Um, hello, everyone. Oh, my script went away. Okay, hi, I'm, I'm Jean Cook, chair of the Mississippi Charter Authorizer Board. This regularly scheduled meeting of the MCSAB is being held today, Monday, January 30th, 2023, at 1 p.m. via Zoom teleconference meetings pursuant to Mississippi Code annotated 25415. The notice of this meeting, which included the date, time, place, and purpose of the meeting, and identified the virtual attendance available to the public has been posted. An audio recording of the meeting of this meeting and minutes of this meeting will be recorded. So oh, now it's the call to order, sorry. The, call, the meeting is being called to order at 1.03 p.m. on Monday, January 30th. And we'll move on to the establishment of a quorum. And as I call the name of names of board members, please state the location of your presence for this meeting. I'm Jean Cook, I'm present in Jackson, Mississippi. Lee Durrett? Uh, present in Tupelo, Mississippi. Thank you. Don Hinton? Uh, present Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Thank you. Kimberly Remack? Present in um, Olive Branch, Mississippi. Okay, thank you. Candace Robbins? Present in Flowood, Mississippi. Thank you. And Jennifer Whittier. For Cape Mississippi. Okay, thank you. Glad to have everybody here. A quorum is present for conducting for conducting a meeting through Zoom teleconference means. Um, we'll, I'll start with the reading of the mission. Um, as we're not located in the boardroom today with the flag, uh, we'll skip the Pledge of Allegiance and move to the mission. Um, the mission of the Mississippi Charter School Authorizer Board is to authorize high quality charter schools, particularly schools designed to expand opportunities for underserved students. Now we'll move on to the adoption of the agenda. I will entertain a motion for approval of today's agenda and please identify yourself for the record. Lee Durrett, so moved. Thank you. Can I get a second? Jennifer Whittier, second. Thank you. Any discussion? Okay. Uh, and for the vote, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? All right. The motion carries. Now we will move on to the approval of the December 12th, 2022 regularly scheduled monthly meeting. And board members, you've all received a copy of the December 12th meeting minutes. And now I will entertain a motion for approval. And please identify yourself. So moved. This is Kimberly Remack. Thank you. Can I get a second? I second Candace Robbins. Thank you. Any discussion? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Jordan, for the minutes, is this working for you with the eyes and the? Yes, we're good so far. Okay, okay good. All right. Um, moving on to the chair report. I don't have anything um, of note to report this month, so we'll move on to the executive director report. Okay, well, thanks. Um, I um, first just want to say um, thank you to everybody who's here today and welcome everybody who are all of our guests. I can't see everybody, but I know we have some guests online with us. And then just Happy New Year again to all of those who I have not seen since we got into the 2023 school year um, and year, not just school year. Um, but as always, I do want to draw your attention to the newsletter. It's in your packet each month, LinkedIn there for you. But 
I couldn't believe it when I look back. Schools have been receiving these newsletters now for two full years. We started two years ago in January, but it does allow us to highlight um, our schools when they are doing something super exciting that we want to share with the others. It provides us an opportunity to share resources with one another, provide reminders, links to memos, and easy um, uh, communication for easy reference when we can link in emails or memos. So it's a great way to communicate with the with the schools and um, ensure that we're not just filling their inboxes day in and day out with email after email after email. So I appreciate Jordan working on that every month and um, just want to say a special thank you to her. can't believe it's been two years that we've been doing that now. Um, item B in the um, uh, or on the agenda is a link to a press release regarding the congressionally directed spending money that our schools have received. I want to say thank you, Mississippi Today did a really nice article detailing the specifics of that grant and what the money will mean for the schools. Um, just to point out for those of you that don't know, the schools receiving that funding are Ambition Prep, Clarksdale Collegiate, LaFleur Legacy, and Midtown. Each one of those schools were significantly expanding, adding a grade this year. And so um, those schools were eligible for that grant funding. Uh, the schools will learn more about that tomorrow um, during a webinar, but they are generally authorized to spend those funds on technology, um, supplies, and um, some other things that they always in accordance with Edgar. Um, and so they'll have to be um, independent of us when they do that spending. So the, the feds will actually follow them through this process from here. But I do wanna thank Senator uh, Cindy Hyde-Smith's office again for supporting us. They worked with us during the past nine months to ensure that we got to the finish line. So I've, I've thanked her um, via the press release and in my email communications, but I do wanna say publicly a thank you to them. Their office has been really outstanding to work with. So I'm grateful for that relationship. Item C and D in your packet are also LinkedIn materials that are gonna provide you some information on the teacher shortages in Mississippi, as well as nationally with respect to charter school teacher turnover and retention. I just wanna encourage you um, to read both of those articles if you haven't already. There's some interesting information in there. I know the state of Mississippi has fewer, fewer teacher um, in terms of teacher needs this year than last year, but we still have a lot of teacher vacancies. So fewer teacher vacancies than before, but still a lot of, of folks needing teachers. And then the article that's written um, by Daniel um, Buck, he um, does a nice job of linking in a, additional resources and references. And I would encourage you to look at that to an interesting thing that I would point out is that a third of our charter teachers across the nation, not just in Mississippi, have fewer than three years of teaching experience. And most of you know, if you've been in education any, any length of time, that um, the teacher is the, the most important factor in the whole big scheme of things, right? Having an effective teacher is what matters most to student learning. And so that's important to consider um, even going forward when we talk about professional development and opportunities for our schools to engage in that, to ensure that they, they have the staff that they need to for the results that they need to get for their kiddos. Um, let's see, this month I drafted and submitted some additional information to the U.S. Department of Education on the charter school uh, program grant that we've been working on for several years now. Denise and I will be meeting with our project director tomorrow to ensure that we're all on the same page in terms of what our responsibilities are versus others' responsibilities. So more info on that to come, I'm sure. Um, FBI audit, when I got to the um, authorizer in 2019, one of the first calls I got was from my board chair at that time, who said, Lisa, I need you to call Barbara at the FBI. And I was like, okay, well, that, that's interesting. What, what, what does Barbara from the FBI need? Um, but um, anyway, they apparently do an audit of fingerprint processing um, for different agencies every three to four years and randomly we are selected every three to four years, lucky us. So Jordan has been working on that this year um, and Amy has supported her through that work and they are complete with the audit. But the, uh, the 
interesting thing is that the report actually goes back to the Department of Public Safety. And so the, the report is really, even though it's an audit, it's a, um, uh, a random sampling of our processes. And then Jordan, your contact will work with you to fine tune anything that needs to be corrected on our end, right? That's correct. They gave us some additional guidance just to shore up our processes. So they'll be, they'll do a follow up with us. Yep. But the, again, the report will go to DPS because it's really not an audit of us. It's just that random sampling. So, um, but it's always interesting when you get in, uh, a call from the FBI. Um, but I feel good about that. And I do want to say thank you to Jordan and Amy on that as well. Um, last week, Kimberly and I attended a cold but really well um, attended event for um, school choice out on the footsteps of the Capitol. And it was really, it was really great to see kids from our school. I wish you all could have seen the kids, the little ambition cheerleaders. They were precious in their little bows and their little cheerleader outfits, and they were absolutely adorable. Horrible. But um, but it was wonderful to be there with a large crowd. I think there were representatives from most of our schools, at least those schools in the Jackson area. Um, so it was it was really nice to to be engaged in that and then spend the day at the Capitol, um, which Kimberly and I were able to. Kimberly, do you have anything that you want to add to that? Kimberly, do you have anything you want to add? Sorry, uh, no, not not really. I think you you gave us a, gave a good brief overview of our day there. Um, enjoyed seeing the superintendents from across the state. They just happened to be there too and met a few uh, new faces. And um, but it was a it was a busy time. It was a really great program that they put on on the uh, south steps of the Capitol, and um, it was a really cold day. <laughs> yes, it was. But it was well worth our time. It well was. worth it. So thank you, Kimberly. Um, okay, so a quick legislative update. We have one bill um, that was drafted for us by the House Education Chairman, um, Richard Bennett, and that will be to authorize the State Department of Education to provide EEF classroom supply monies for our teachers who are eligible at the charter schools. It, tomorrow is a deadline, so I am not sure it did not get brought up in committee last week, and unless they have another committee meeting um, scheduled, I didn't see one as of this morning, um, but unless they have another one, it will not go through this year, um, unless the the chairman brings it up tomorrow. So um, I'll keep you posted on that. My hope is that it gets through tomorrow and makes it to the floor and we're able to provide at least um, that benefit to our teachers who certainly are um, or should be eligible for it and certainly deserving of it. So um, I will keep you posted on that. Uh, as speaking of legislation, uh, Capital Resources and Amy both have been tracking bills for us. Amy has spent um, a lot of time digging into even bills that might not have uh, education in it, just to make sure that there's not anything that might be in one of those bills that would have an impact on the charter community. So I appreciate her time um, and effort digging into all of those. And Pete and I have just been communicating regularly. We've spent time together. We've looked at bills. And then he's also doing the same thing as Amy, just making sure that it, there's not anything that would impact us. Um, and if there is, then we, we got, we'll let you know after we have an opportunity to talk. Um, I think the rest of my report is really self-explanatory. You can see the work that we've been doing um, under the um, new business section of the agenda. We prepared for the release of several different RFPs. We have prepared for the 2023 call for quality school application cycle, and then uh, the performance framework report for all of our schools. I think the only other thing I had on my agenda was maybe Jordan, if you want to pull up that document, it, can you all see that? Um, so what's next for NAXA? I think last month I mentioned to you that um, we had been selected to participate as an authorizer in the next um, iteration, really, of what applications for new schools are going to lo look like going forward in terms of recommendations and resources from NAXA, the National Association of Charter School Authorizers. And you can see from that map, we are in really good 
company. You can see Texas is going to be a part of it. I think Nevada, um, I can't see those, those closely, but it looks like um, I know New York and Missouri and Tennessee and Louisiana, us and others. So it looks like a good group and we will get really rolling on that work. Um, we have homework to do already and, um, and we'll start working on that um, next week. So I'll keep you posted on what that looks like for us going forward and then hopefully for the entire um, charter sector across the nation. Um, so I'm excited about that opportunity. And I think that's it for my report for um, this month. Okay, well, thank you. That was very easy. Uh, any questions from anybody? Okay, all right. We're gonna move on to the financial report and Ms. Denise, uh, Denise de Rosset is here with us. Well, I've got a real short report. Um, I just wanted to tell you that right now we're spending about 60% of our expenditures for salaries. And there was a change legislatively um, and also uh, our potential legislation, and then also um, a change in the health and life insurance premiums. The health and life insurance premiums increased by $26 per person in January. Um, I think we're okay with our budget where it is um, without having to make a change for that, but that was unexpected. And then the retirement system has put in um, a proposal to add 5% to every employee's um, retirement, which would be paid by the agency, and that will go into effect in October. So we just need to have that in the back of our minds for, for next year's budget and um, make sure that we have that ready to go. Um, I do want to point out on the contractual line item, there's a negative amount of almost $70, and I just wanted to explain that. Um, Dr. Carmacheri went on a, on a trip um, for some leadership, and the association paid us back for the expense. And so they paid part of her travel and they paid part of her registration. The travel, you don't see the negative amount um, because we had other travel expenses. So they uh, reimbursed us about $900 in total. And so the um, membership dues is showing as a negative amount here. Um, the, um, one other thing that I wanted to mention is that we had uh, last month revised the budget so that we would have some of the... Um, the things that we thought the CSP was going to pay for moved into the operational budget. But since that time, we did get the no-cost extension and have come up with some of the um, contracts being allowed to be paid by the CSP. So the things that are in your packet in red for, for the um, National Association of Charter School Authorizers for 48000 and another one for 26000 are being paid out of the CSP, and we're moving this out of the operational budget. And I think that's all noted in red. And then the only thing that came out of the CSP, except for these two expenditures, is we um, are charging 10% of Lisa's salary, um, or a part of her salary. And in our meeting tomorrow that she mentioned, that um, percentage may change. Um, and hopefully we'll know more about what we can charge to the CSP. That's really basically the financial report. I'll just ask Jordan to pull it up so um, we can get on the big question. We weren't seeing them, but um, this is the agenda. So, okay, thank you, Denise. Does anybody have any questions for Denise? Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, looks like we don't have any committee reports, so we'll move on to public comment. And Ms. Amanda Johnson from Clarksdale Collegiate has requested to give a public comment and um, please restrict your comments to no more than five minutes, please. Ms. Johnson. Thank you, no problem at all. Um, so thank you so much for allowing me an opportunity to come before you today. Um, if you don't know me, my name is Amanda Johnson. I'm the founder and executive director of Clarksdale Collegiate Public Charter School. Um, so Clarksdale Collegiate has received and responded to our latest um, performance framework evaluation that reviewed data from the 2021-22 school year. Um, Clark Cell Collegiate for the fourth year in the row achieved meets expectations in all major areas that were measured and not waived due to COVID-19. As you know, meets expectations, the highest measure in operations and finance. Um, according to the documents from uh, MCSAB, the Mississippi Charter School Performance Framework assesses schools on their ability to operate as sound, independent entities that successfully serve all students. 
Despite having some lingering concerns regarding the framework design, we are pleased with the framework results this year and in previous years. And through the process of reviewing um, our data and having conversations um, uh, about our framework, um, there are a couple of things that, that came up to me that I wanted to um, share with you today. Um, so discussions about Clarksdale Collegiate's performance that took place during our high school application process simply don't align with the formal evaluation from you as our authorizer. Our framework review illustrates a very different picture of performance than what was discussed in meetings this past fall. We are confident that an objective review of our most recent performance and our renewal application combined with our renewal application um, that we will submit um, before tomorrow's deadline um, will demonstrate that our team, um, we believe, has earned a five-year contract renewal. We're just really pleased um, with um, the results of our school over the past, um, over the charter term, and, and hope that you will see the same as well. Secondly, we have mentioned previously that we believe um, you as board members um, should have all information available to you as you fulfill your essential duty of authorizing and monitoring charter schools in Mississippi. We continue to believe that board members should visit our schools and speak to our team members and stakeholders to better understand our schools and the impact we are having in our communities. To that end, Clarksdale Collegiate would like to invite you to visit our school for a tour of the school, to visit classrooms and to hear from some of our team members. We are holding the first Tuesday of every month at nine o'clock a.m. for you to visit. The first opportunity will be Tuesday, February 7th at nine o'clock a.m. We are also open to other dates, times that work with your schedule. Our goal is to have you visit and come see our school in action. So we are happy to work with your schedule, um, but wanted to offer a time um, for you if you wanted to come together as a group. We believe a visit to our school will give you important context for upcoming critical decisions regarding our school that will impact more than 500 scholars and families. Lastly, we noticed the application for new schools will be released soon. Um, we're excited to see it um, will be available soon as we will submit an application to continue serving scholars through 12th grade. We have taken the feedback received in the last cycle seriously and are prepared to resubmit in the upcoming cycle. However, we do hope to clarify that submitting a successful application through the call for quality schools process will allow us to expand our existing K-8 charter to a K-12 charter, which is a structure that will allow us to seamless, seamlessly serve our scholars and families. To restate the question, we would like to know if the quality schools application process is a process to make a substantial amendment to an existing charter. We look forward to getting that clarity soon. And of course, we look forward to having you on our campus, hopefully in the near future. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Johnson. Um, all right, uh, everyone note the times to visit and it'd be great if we can organize one together. That, that's a good idea, so thank you. Um, all right, we're gonna move on to new business now. And the first item on the agenda is consider approval of the 2023 Call for Quality Schools RFP the letter of intent, the new school's application and existing operators application. So I will entertain a motion for approval of the 2023 call for quality schools RFP to include the letter of intent and the applications for new schools and existing operators. Would anyone like to make that motion? I'll make a motion um, that we move forward. Okay, thank you. Kimberly, is there a second? Second. Got it. That, thank you. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none, I'll take a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Um, Madam Chair. Oh, yes. May I um, ask uh, Jordan, please, um, to just share the list of schools where or districts where uh, charter schools will be eligible this year? Um, you know, in prior years, back in I think 2019, we had 41 districts where charters could locate throughout the state. Mm -hmm. So this year we have only 14. And so um, I think it's important for the board to recognize the fact that our areas of opportunity 
for actually, you know, having an application and interest in that particular area is really narrowed down this year. Um, part of that due to a lot of different reasons, but um, but I do think it's important for the board to understand. Uh, on this document, we will we'll keep this document um, uh, available on the website, and then anybody who's interested can access the details of these districts um, at the Department of Ed. But I do think that's um, that's really relevant this year, considering some of the conversations we've had about expanding charters throughout the state. This year, the the areas of opportunity will be limited. Lisa, can you can you explain a little bit why they are limited? I know you said it's many reasons, but I'm yeah, sure. Um, I mean, other than the obvious reason. Right, right. Well, I think, um, well, first of all, the law is only going to allow charter operators to go into a district that is rated D or F. Right. This year, the, um, the accountability results saw a significant decrease in the number of Ds and Fs since 2019. And I, I don't want to speak out of turn because I'm not the the director of accountability at MDE, but I can I can say that our our accountability model is based heavily and weighted heavily on growth. And when you have a, an accountability model based on growth and you're looking at growth over time from 2019 to 2021, 22, you're going to see more growth and an increase in um, in your grades. Um, and a, a decrease in the number of Ds and Fs. So, it, Jean, is that a fair statement um, based on what your conversations have been at the department? Yes, and I just pulled up this key facts document that we published about it. And um, to just kind of build on what you said, in the first year after the pandemic, full year back to school, students scored overall lower than they normally do because they had that big disruption. Then the second year back, 21, 22, they made up a lot of lost ground. So it's almost like they made more growth in one year than in a typical year. And a lot of that fed into their grade. So that, and though that growth might be hard to sustain in, in, as things level out and, and things get back to normal, which they, you know, have in, the, in a lot of places. Right, right. I mean, was it primarily because they had a lower score during the pandemic and I mean, if you skip the pandemic year, are we still seeing comparable between, I guess, 2019 and 2022 or whatever we would in, say? Yes, in terms of test scores, in, te in terms of just the proficiency levels across the state. So, uh, you know, if you just look at how students scored in English language arts and math before the pandemic and after the pandemic, kind of overall, they're almost the same. But in between, they were tested as well. They were tested during the pandemic. And those dropped, and but those scores didn't feed into a grade. There was a pause on grades for a couple of years. So the first year back when we're getting graded, it's 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 almost like counterintuitive. The 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 scores kind of went back to what they were before the pandemic, but the grade in some cases was even higher because it was influenced by all the progress that students made bouncing back from the dip that they made. Almost like think of it like if you got extra points because you you uh, um, made up for what you you fell behind and then you you make you got back to where you were so you kind of get extra points for that that's not that's not the technical answer but it's a way to see it. Okay. Thank yeah, you. and Don, I kind of piggyback on what Jane said. You, you probably will see things level out over time. So next year, I would expect to see maybe even um, maybe a few more Ds and maybe even a few more Fs and uh, kind of level in its way back out. You hope that's not the case, but but just based on, I think, the, um, the way that our accountability model looks at things, taking into consideration the proficiency levels and then growth, um, I think that may happen. Yeah, and, and also schools, um, the, there was there was a relief for high school students to have to pass certain tests to graduate during the pandemic. Those were on pause. So, um, you know, some, you know, that might have caused some districts to have higher graduation rates than they normally have. And so until all those kids graduate who had their tests waived, it's just going to take a couple of years because people take students take high school tests at different points during their high school experience. That's it, another little influence. So there's, there's some factors in there that um, 
thankfully, you know, decrease the number of D's and F's, um, but we're not quite sure what it's going to look like next year and, you know, in the following years. Great question, Don. Yeah, Other perfect. questions? Is that helpful? Okay. Yeah. okay. And I'm sorry, Dr. Kamatari, I didn't give you a chance to talk about this item before I just dive, go right in. I'm thrown off by the Zoom. So, oh. <laughs> uh, all right. So, we're going to move on to the next item. Um, I think this, that one passed. And this is to consider approval to release RFP for technical assistance to applicant teams. Yeah. So, do you have anything you want to say about that? Not, not really. This is really a standard or, or had been a standard RFP that we had released in the past. Ms. Perry from, Prof from Professional Polish had been um, conducting this work and uh, actually with B and with D providing um, technical assistance to schools in pre-opening. So without um, her support this year and um, with, I tried to pare back some of the work a little bit, knowing the um, the challenges with the budget, but these are, are just basic um, supports that we would have in place for applicant teams going through the application cycle, and then for our schools that are in pre-opening, and you know we have two schools in pre-opening now. So those are, that's actually B and D, I kind of skipped over C. Okay. okay. Um, Okay, I'll entertain a motion for approval to release the RFP for technical assistance for applicant teams. So moved on in. Thank you. Can I get a second? Second, Kimberly Remack. Okay, thank you. Is there any discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that motion carries. Moving on to item C is to release the RFP for technical assistance for application evaluation support. Um, is there anything you want to say about this, Dr. Karmacharya? Again, this is just an annual release um, for technical assistance. This will be for the evaluators who actually look at the applications um, that are submitted for the 2023 call for quality schools. So any applications we receive will go through the, the same process that um, what in the past has been done by SchoolWorks. They'll use our rubrics, our guidance, and our applications to uh, evaluate those schools. Okay, thank you. All right, I will entertain a motion for approval to release the RFP for technical assistance for evaluation support. So moved, leader. Thank you. And I guess second. Leader. Okay, sounds like Jennifer. Okay, that's Jennifer. All of those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. I forgot to ask about discussion, but it sounds like there's no discussion on that. Okay, so the motion carries. Thank you. Um, now we'll move on to item D, and Dr. Karmacharya has addressed that already, I believe, and that is to consider approval to release the RFP for technical assistance for applicants and schools in pre-opening. So I'll now entertain a motion to release that RFP for technical assistance for applicants in schools in pre-opening. I make a motion that we um, approve. Okay, thank you. Can I get a second? That was Kimberly Remack. Second, not in. Thank you. Any discussion? Okay, I'll we'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that motion carries. And now we're moving on to E to consider approval to release an RFP for annual authorizer evaluation. Yep, thank uh, you. Um, yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. This item E is um, an annual, <laughs> obviously, since hence the name, an mm -hmm. annual authorizer evaluation. We have contracted with NAPSA during the past few years. This is a requirement or one of the goals actually listed in the CSP grant for the authorizer to look at our own practices, look at our own policies, to make sure that we are aligned with best practices such as NAXIS principles and standards. And so this RFP will seek to find a, a, a vendor that can support that work and look at the current practices and policies that we have in place against those principles and standards that NAXA has. Okay, thank you. Um, I will entertain a motion for approval to release the RFP for the annual authorizer evaluation. 
So moved, Kimberly Remack. Thank you. Can I get a second? Jennifer Whittier. Thank you. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the motion carries. And now we'll move on to item F is the information item and it's the annual performance frameworks for school year 21-22. And Dr. Karmacharya will present on this. So item F um, is just an informational item. Amanda alluded to this in her um, public comment a few minutes ago, but these are your reports on the annual performance framework report for each of the schools. There is a timeline included there for your convenience for you, able, for you to be able to see when the, the schools received their reports, when that seven day period was due for them to review and provide feedback, and then any conversations we had afterwards. Um, there were a couple of schools that had some um, questions about some of the reports that MDE had meet with the Department of Education. We allowed our, um, our uh, or invited actually our school leaders to attend that meeting. And some did, some had questions answered, I think um, to the point that they didn't have any additional questions and others may still have some outlying questions around some of those reports and how they're actually um, pulled from the data to make up the uh, report card that the state releases. Uh, so those are just informational items um, for you. They will be uh, public information and they will be placed on the website um, going forward. So unless somebody has a question about any of them or the process, then this is just FYI. Any questions from or comments from anybody? I'll make a comment. I just found them really clear. Um, I was glad to hear from a school leader that she was pleased from Amanda. Um, you know, I like seeing all the green uh, and, uh, you know, I just felt like it gave some really good information and, you know, as, as much as you want to drill down to see what are areas that are doing exceptionally well or ones that may need to be improved a bit. So um, I, I thought the end result was, was really clear. So thank you. Um, uh, okay. Um, it looks like... Uh, Okay, executive session. I don't believe there's any need for that, or is there a need for that? Um, okay, hold yes. on. Let me get my other script here. Um, okay, there's one more attachment. Okay, um, so the Okay, it, it, all right, so we're first gonna, is there a motion that the board consider making a closed determination of the need to go into executive session? Um, you're, on, you're on mute. Okay, um, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. In accordance with Mississippi Code annotated section five, 41-7-4-B, I move that the board go into a session to discuss strategies for respect to current litigation. Okay, um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, any opposed? Aye. Oh, sorry, I'm giving up time. Okay, thank you. Um, any opposed? Okay, so that that carries, and now I think we have to clear the Zoom from for guests. Yes, I'll work on that. Just hold on. Okay. Just okay. And and then the um, we need counsel and the executive director to stay and. Okay. Are you back in? Okay, I'm announcing that the board is now going into executive session um, in accordance with Mississippi Code Annotated Section 254174B uh, to discuss strategy sessions and negotiations regarding current litigation. We will now go into executive session.
Okay. Looks like we're back in open session and uh, we did not take any action during executive session. Uh, so we're gonna move on to the announcement of our next meeting. The next regularly scheduled meeting will be on March 13th, 2023, 1 p.m. at 239 North Lamar Street, Suite 207, Jackson, Mississippi, 39201. Uh, and now I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you. Can I get a second? Second. Second. Leader. Okay. Um, any discussion? No. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. That motion carries and we are adjourned. And thank you, everybody. Thanks, y'all. See you yeah. next time.